So allergies are essentially an abnormal immune response to uh, what might be a completely harmless substance, uh, say for example, a peanut or a grass pollen. So our um, immune systems can sometimes uh, perceive them as being dangerous and start attacking them, thinking they're virus, for example, and, and the collateral damage that occurs uh, is, is basically an allergic reaction. Now, exactly why this um, develops or how exactly this uh, uh, a person reacts to certain uh, chemicals and not others, certain allergens and not others, is, is not something that we completely understand. But there is something to do with uh, genetics there. There's genes that really have a, have a part to play and an environment. So in terms of when do allergies develop, there are different types of allergies that would develop at uh, different uh, times in, uh, in, in life. So allergies are very common in early childhood. Uh, most people know children uh, have food allergies, eczema, um, and uh, to a degree of allergic uh, wheeze and asthma, uh, but hay fever and certain types of food allergies and, uh, and, and asthma again are quite common in adults too. Yes, um, certain types of uh, allergies are common in later life. Uh, in fact, uh, there are certain specific types of food allergies, uh, certain um, uh, you know, other allergic conditions, such as asthma and hay fever are extremely common in adults. In fact, um, uh, a lot of uh, adult population suffering from hay fever would find that actually it's a condition that is um, affecting their quality of life, uh, for example, and, and they, they seek out for solutions to that. Uh, specific uh, food allergies uh, sometimes can be found for the first time uh, in, in adults, and um, uh, there are some which are only common in adults. Uh, sometimes it's the change in a um, uh, person's circumstances. Say, for example, they uh, start to live in a new location, they move to a new town, there is new allergens around in the um, environment they are in, change in diet, hormones, uh, chemicals, stress can sometimes bring this on. So there are lots of factors why this kind of switch is turned on and allergies suddenly appear from nowhere, seemingly. So the commonest adult onset allergy would be allergic rhinitis or hay fever, like we, most people understand it. Um, asthma is common in adults. Certain types of food allergies are much more common in adults than in children. For example, shellfish allergies is common in adults. Uh, certain types of uh, tree nut allergies are common in adults. And uh, there's a specific type of food allergy called pollen food syndrome or oral allergy syndrome, which is also um, common in adults. And, and uh, uh, you know, of course, many other conditions which start in childhood can then uh, continue into adulthood and, and will still require um, treatment sometimes. So yes, uh, so because allergies tend to be because our immune cells recognize some of these allergens as dangerous. Now our immune cells have a very strong memory. So once a person is sensitized to an allergen, then they tend to be uh, sensitized for life, essentially. Now, sometimes they develop a degree of tolerance um, because they are being exposed to it in, in small uh, doses. Uh, and then for various reasons, that exposure uh, doesn't occur for a period of time. Uh, typically, for example, someone goes away and lives in a different place. 
um, and, and then comes back to their environment or to another environment where the allergen is present, then the allergens uh, can start causing more symptoms. Now that can be perceived as uh, uh, an allergy that was, didn't exist, uh, or sometimes it's just an allergy which was not really causing many symptoms, but starts causing much more symptoms in, in adult life now. Allergies certainly have genetic predisposition. We all know that they run in families. If a parent has um, an allergic condition, then a child has 50% chance of developing some sort of allergy. Now, if the both the parents have some allergy, then the child is 75% more likely to de develop allergies. Now, it doesn't mean they have the same allergies. If the parent, for example, has a nut allergy, it doesn't mean the child will have a nut allergy. It just means that they are at risk of developing some sort of allergy, maybe just a hay fever, maybe a milk allergy, maybe something else completely different. So it, it does run in families, but not the same allergies, not, not passed on to the children. <clears throat> 